here we go so what is the health and happiness blueprint let's jump straight in the blueprint is basically a map of your world as it is right now and i think this is very important because quite often we will we'll know that things aren't right and we sit with them for a long time and we certainly get hoodwinked with all the shiny objects and courses and books and blueprints and swipe files and and relatively stay the same for a very long time and i run this at a workshop and I think it had such an impact on people, hence why I called it the blueprint. Because the aim is you get a snapshot of exactly where you are right now on 10 important areas of life. More importantly, it gives you a template of how to make small progress. I'm all about long-term change realizing that if we were to look at aesop's fables i think that's probably the best example tortoise wins for a very good reason it's the continual small steps over time and i wanted to zoom out here to kind of create a bigger picture if you think of anything that you've achieved in your world I guarantee you it took months or years. It took a lot of hard work, the, the classic blood, sweat, tears, I'm sure. Think of your degree. Think of learning an instrument, a second language, your trade, physical fitness or health, and anything you've done as a skill set to get to a reasonable or maybe exceptional level. You are looking at years of work. And I think the big thing here is as soon as the New Year's resolutions appear, we believe that we can change our entire life in a couple of weeks, and it simply doesn't work like that. So <clears throat> I wanted to highlight 10 areas. In fact, first and foremost, will it work for me? I mean, that is the big question, isn't it? That is the big question that a lot of people have, particularly if learned helplessness has crept on board. And what I mean by that is if we refer to the resolutions, if you have if you've attempted to do something, so many times in the past and it hasn't worked learned helplessness is a state of giving up you talk yourself out of actually taking action because you are certain that your track record of failure 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 will only play out again the very next time and what actually happens is we shelve this thing and someone may say to you oh you know steve how's that business oh you know uh, who, who was I kidding? It was just an idea, it was a dream. How's your health journey going? Oh, I gave up, I'm past it. And it's very easy to shelf stuff that really could be life-changing if only we had a way in a realisation of what is required and the important thing, which is to understand it isn't always a straight line. And I, I think I'll use the sat nav here as an example. If you're going to a friend's house, you need their address, otherwise you're guessing. <laughs> But more importantly, a journey has three parts. You've got where you start, you've got where you're going, and once you've got both of them, you've got the journey. <clears throat> now, could you imagine pulling up to some roadworks? You wouldn't go home, would you? <laughs> and this is what happens. <laughs> this is what I see with so many people, and it's the reason resolutions fall flat. Literally, well, most of them are gone by now. Two to three weeks in, 70 to 80% of New Year's resolutions, mainly aimed at health, gym or running or whatever it is or fixing your diet <clears throat> will fall flat on their face and here's the thing if you're going to meet a friend and you turn up to roadworks you don't drive home <laughs> if you've taken the wrong way and need to detour the, you know the car doesn't say that's it and you go home you change your route and here's the thing it's only over when you quit and it's so important to realize that Everyone now that has literally signed off on their resolutions because they missed the gym twice or they had a pizza blowout or a, a buffet with friends and they said, oh, you know, that's it. I knew I couldn't do it. You've got to understand the importance of 70 to 80 percent consistency. Missing breakfast isn't the issue. Missing two gym sessions isn't the issue. The issue is believing that the one thing that rocks the car is the one thing that sinks you. And so many people are guilty of that.
So grab a pen and paper, please, because this is interactive. And if you're <clears throat> if you're watching this on catch up, please pause it and grab a pen and paper. And I mean that because we're, we're going in, we're jumping in, we're doing it now or, or open up a, a Word document or something similar. So no more excuses. It's so easy to put things off because of overwhelm and the illusion of being busy and not having time. And once you sit with these things, you realize that they were only difficult because that was how you perceived them. You simply kept playing this, this uh, tune to the extent of too big, too scary, not ready yet, need to be better, need to do some work. Think, think of wanting to get fit before joining the gym i mean seriously sit with that let that spin around in your head for a minute or so i want to get fit before i join the gym it's like cleaning your house before the cleaner arrives it's like you know fixing your car to the best of your ability before taking it to the garage why do we do this and it's only when we're honest and we catch ourselves out do we realize that at no point in anything have we done have we got the skill set before taking action? <laughs> Think about that. I'm going to get fit and then join the gym. I hear it so often. The only thing holding you back is taking action because the thing that you currently lack appears because you took the journey and there's no other way around it. Sorry. <laughs> you get fit in the gym. That's what it's for. So time, I want you to look at the time availability you have each week. <clears throat> and guys, I'm going to be brutally honest here. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to shoot from the hip, spotlight on, nowhere to hide. If your health is a train wreck, and I mean that with compassion, I'm not here to sugarcoat it or puff it up. If your health is a train wreck and you spend three hours an evening watching soaps, you, you've got to have a long, hard sit down with yourself and work out what's going on. It is possible to rebuild trust to the extent where you are willing to show up for you on a regular basis and do the work. And I guarantee that all of you can find 20 minutes, even if you went to bed earlier and therefore got up a little bit earlier, to set that routine in place. Four things, five minutes each, a gentle movement mobility or yoga warm-up followed by a half decent body weight and small equipment circuit and then to cool down you might do some breathing or qigong and you finish that with either a stretch or a meditation now that doesn't seem like much 20 minutes but when you've done that for maybe four to six weeks and you start to realize the benefit of that in terms of focus of fitness of the discipline of routine but not just that, how that as a nucleus spills over into other areas like the garage door that you've said you'll fix for six years, like the window that doesn't close, like the, the box of stuff in the spare room that you're going to take to the tip. All of these empty promises are flashing nodes, are open tabs that you've ignored. And therefore, what that does long term is sever trust. And this is such an important thing. It begins to sever trust. So where can you grab 20 to 30 minutes? And there's two ways of doing this. You can either do a regular 10 to 15 minutes daily, or maybe a 30 minutes where you do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because there's a little bit more effort, there's a little bit more fatigue, and therefore you've got the benefit of a day off to recover. So let's say an hour to 90 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes to set up some sense of health wellness fitness reflection journaling routine put that in your calendar and there's a reason for that if it doesn't exist in the calendar it is only a dream or an idea in your head and will do nothing more than exist there floating around hoping that next year monday is january the first because then we can go back in with double effort on our resolutions and bang second weekend same thing's going to happen. So tweaking your dials. <clears throat> we are looking at several areas, 10 in fact, with an honest score of where you are with them right now. 
not the version of you that was fit 10 years ago or where you'd like to be six months from now, but the, the actual transparent, honest version of you that is listening to me and breathing this second. Because honesty is very powerful. You can't lie to yourself. <clears throat> and you know that. You know that you can't lie to yourself. You, you can lie to everyone else, but you can't lie to yourself. So the areas that we're going to cover are physical health and fitness, mental clarity and inner peace, nutrition, hydration, sleep, relationships, career, hobbies, expression of creativity, and who you are and who you know you can be. And that's a very interesting one because there's many a good person in the wrong job. And I, and I mean that a huge part of their existence is this black hole where they turn up because they have to and they hate it. Now, could you imagine literally selling your soul to something you hate, but been there for 17 years? I know these people. I've worked with them. Part of them is dead inside. And that is a huge tragedy. So let's hope that's not you. And if it is, we can reverse it. So for physical health and fitness i want you to honestly score where you are right now <clears throat> so there's three things that happen here there's that genuine number which would be a reflection of your vehicle there's then the realization that unless you are literally in hospital after a car crash you are not one you're probably three or four or five you know, don't think of 10 as an Olympic athlete. Think of 10 relative to you. You know, maybe you do a great 5K park run or you actually do a marathon or you, you can train for 20 minutes without collapsing. Think of it as being relative to you. Now, for those of you that are three, four and five, <clears throat> it's time for a little bit of a gratitude pill. You're not one. And that's the important thing. When you are three, four or five, as in, you know, you can climb stairs and not get out of breath. You could wander around the fields. You could maybe kick the ball for five or 10 minutes with the kids or the grandchildren. You're not one. And that is something to be grateful for because even though you'd like to make progress, something that you are doing is working. And it's important to remember that something is working. Now, what does one point more than you've given yourself look like that is the work now th these are all the same it's a different area it's the same template if you are a three for example you couldn't run around the park for more than a couple of minutes <clears throat> you've got weight to lose you're not in a great place you haven't seen a gym for five years so <clears throat> you know you're three what does four look like and spend some time with that. What does four look like? Because I'm a huge fan of realistic goals. You know, a four isn't I'm, I'm going to join the gym and do 16 hours a week. <laughs> a four is maybe I'm going to get a, a cheap fitness tracker and get 5,000 steps a day. Maybe there's a field or a park and I'm going to do two to three laps in the morning. Maybe I put on a YouTube video and I'll do five minutes of whatever it is, aerobics or dance, or it doesn't matter. There's, there's absolutely thousands of ways in here. What's the way in for you to nudge that needle up one point? And ideally, give yourself a time frame, because if you've ever handed in a piece of coursework late or, or just on time, it probably only got handed in because it actually had a deadline that you knew had serious consequences. So set yourself maybe a calendar month. So we're at the end of January now. By the end of February, what does one point more than you currently score for physical health and fitness look like in your world? Because that has given you two things. The number you've given you is your start point. The number you'd like to move to is your destination. Return to the sat nav, your journey. The program that you create is what leads you from three to four or two to three. Or you might, I don't know, you might be three and you might go to five. Good luck to you. But for many people, one point is where it's at. It's that realization of the gradual small steps over time that all add up and have a significant impact. As I said, anything that you've got, 
worth having. You know it took time and effort. It didn't land special delivery next day or in a couple of weeks. And here's the big illusion. You know, people go on these insane diets and, and training programs that really, you know, knock the soul out of them because you've moved from almost nothing to, to, to crazy in the nicest way. And you can't sustain that unless it is enjoyable, unless it's something that you know will bring in something positive to your world with minimal suffering. I mean, don't get me wrong. Exercise is stress. Exercise is stress. It raises homeostasis. You, you've got adrenaline and cortisol. It's stress, but it's good stress. So there's no avoiding that. But <clears throat> when you've not been in that arena and you jump in and you expect of yourself far more than you're able to give you'll hurt and a quick tip here it's not what you can push it's more what you can recover from remember that don't think of jumping in at level seven if you haven't even spent time at level one build up stick with it slightly progress it build up stick with it slightly progress it show me what you can do in six weeks that's the important thing so mental clarity and inner peace, number two. Now, I would imagine that this is probably the big one for most people, because if I'm honest, we, we know that we could all drink a little bit more water. We know that the body needs maintenance and ideally, you know, going for a run or checking out some YouTube videos and training along or going to the park or even taking up a sport. We, we get that. And if I said to you, you know, oh, Dave, how would you improve your sleep? Well, you know, I'd, I'd get to sleep earlier and I'd probably minimize caffeine and I'd, I'd get a routine where I'm up at a regular time. Bang, it's not rocket science. You know this. Because if I said to you physical fitness, you could tell me all of those things I just mentioned with gym and, and, and sport. And if I say mental, not fitness, but well-being, i.e. actually training the mind, you might give me meditation, you might mention yoga. But beyond that, most people have no idea that this is an aspect of their life they can significantly improve. Particularly when their heads are running around like an episode from Tom and Jerry. <clears throat> so honestly, score yourself. Where do you sit in the mental clarity and inner peace space? For, for a lot of people, I would imagine it's two, three and four. It isn't one. So that's something to be very grateful for. There's a level of awareness. And, and I think what will really help here is at the end of the movie, while you're watching the credits, you ask yourself why you did that. <laughs> Sorry for calling you out, guys, but I, I know the script. I've done this for, for a decade almost. <laughs> you eat the thing and then you're angry at the thing that you ate. Yeah, we know it. The fridge raid or whatever it is. The idea of mindful awareness is not to get to the end of that thing and then beat yourself up. It's to know the consequences of your actions before you take them. That is awareness. That's the beauty of this prefrontal cortex, that it can actually plan ahead, not see into the future, but it can consider the outcomes of your choices and their consequences before you do it. And that's, that's the beauty of having this brain, which unfortunately is a toddler destroying the play area unless you've done some considerable work on it. And whenever something happens, it will run and hide and play safe. That's what you're up against, unfortunately. What does it look like for you to nudge that needle forward one point? And for any of you that have been watching my videos, uh, the, the little shorts I've been putting out <clears throat> this week is actually on meditation, funnily enough. That's where I would suggest you start. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on that because it's, it's a huge area. One of the best things you can do for mental clarity is to sit there in silence and fully accept your internal weather. And what I mean by that is anything that turns up mentally, or emotionally or physically sensations there might, might be a pain you might be sad or whatever to sit with that and accept it is to be completely present to this moment not wanting to run away and be anywhere else so that's my recommendation that's how you would nudge a three to a four 
Moving on to nutrition. <clears throat> now, we're certainly not going to deep dive here to look at kind of protein timing and uh, splitting hairs on stuff. This is simply honestly score yourself on your diet. So I, I doubt unless you are literally starving right now and there is no food in your house, you're not one. And I think there's a lot of us that forget that's something to probably be very, very grateful for. I would I would estimate, and as I, as I said, don't make 10 a kind of elite athlete. Make 10 a very good version of you. I would be very shocked if anyone is less than three. I doubt there's any ones or twos. So let's say that looking at probability, we sit around the four or five. It's reasonable. It could be improved. You know, there's work to be done. What does that plus one look like? Now, let me give you some examples of what would pull a seven down to a three or a four. You miss breakfast on a regular basis. You're tanked up on caffeine or energy drinks to stay awake at work because of um, spikes, in, you know, insulin and whatnot. And more importantly, the midday slump. You do a lot of snacking, you're almost grazing because you miss breakfast, so you're catching up with bits and pieces in the drawer or in the cupboards. You're starving in an e of an evening, so you literally eat two meals worth of stuff and then you're picking at snacks and bits and pieces and treats. <clears throat> not good. Now, obviously, I'm not here to call anyone out, but if you listen to that and that's you, even you would admit that's not good. So how do you nudge the needle? Some of my recommendations are, Stop missing breakfast and also avoid cereal. Cornflakes are not breakfast. <laughs> Something like, uh, I mean, in terms of getting the protein in, because the body doesn't store it, therefore it's advisable after a long fast, i.e. several hours of sleep, um, you get the protein in, in terms of muscle repair. Porridge is pretty good. Um, an omelette is probably the best thing you can go for. Um, fry ups, but not all the time. Um, Personally, I, eggs. Eggs are an absolute winner. Also, look at the timing of your meals. If you are someone that grazes, maybe four smaller meals are much better for you than the three that you can't manage or struggle with, or even five. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan. that There's no template. Obviously, I call this a blueprint. But there's no template where I'm going to say, look, here's what you have to do and no deviation. We are all individual with a wealth of experience. Find out what works for you. It may be that if you're, you know, if you eat a large meal and literally comatose afterwards, that's probably not the way that your system works. Could you change it over time? Possibly. But as I said, I'm after the you that's here now, not the version that you'd like in six months. So it's important to meet that version here and be very honest. Other advice for the nutrition front is, to be honest, most of you probably won't need all of those Holland and Barrett supplements that you've purchased and, and hidden in the cupboard somewhere. <laughs> You'll get most of it from food. All I would recommend, based on where I live, um, gloriously sunny England, is vitamin D3 drops, the liquid ones, if you are unable to kind of get your, your stroll when the sun pops up, which it doesn't for most of us for about nine months of the year. So <laughs> vitamin D3, electrolytes in your water, which can help speed up recovery and cellular communication. Big fan of vitamin C. Um, other than that, maybe some magnesium spray on the body, which could really help with sleep. I wouldn't delve too far into, you know, getting tons of multi this and everything else. When you've got a decent balanced diet, and what I mean by that, and that's why I've used this picture, color and single ingredient. If you buy it in a package where you have to take the lid off and there's 20 things in there, that's not really, well, it is food, but I wouldn't really call it the healthiest food, especially if it's got stuff on that you, you can't even understand or pronounce. You know, potato is a potato, an orange is an orange. Um, piece of lamb is a piece of lamb. 
when you've got a thing that's got 30 things in it and it's highly processed and additives and sugar, the best thing you can do is move from what you've currently got that you know doesn't serve you to largely single ingredient whole foods. If, you, if you're going to have a, a, a lamb and some veg, the lamb goes in and then the veg goes into boil and it's all single ingredient. And the great thing there is you'll notice the difference. You really will notice the difference. We've got so many food products out there. The shelves are adorned with them. And I think the big thing with nutrition is mindful shopping. Adding this in as a little bonus, we do have time. If it isn't in your trolley, it can't go in your face. Yes, that's the truth. If you don't buy it, you can't eat it. It's very easy to get pulled into routine and almost unconsciously drift through the aisles, seeing the shiny objects and imagining how tasteful that thing will be. Two for one, buy one, get one free, and we plonk it in. So instead of mindlessly shopping, mindfully shop and become the gatekeeper or the security guard <clears throat> between what you pick up and then what actually finds its way into your trolley or basket. And what I would say there is, you know, don't obviously have a long, hard, in-depth interrogation with this pack of Jaffa cakes, <laughs> but do, do say to yourself, is this moving me forwards or is this me potentially letting a little bit of air out of the tyres? No, I'm all for snacking. You can snack, you can have treats. But when you miss breakfast on a regular basis and then have treats throughout the day and you're sitting there multiple stone overweight and not really in a great place, it's these multiple small changes where you move the needle from three to four, you start moving, you pay more attention to your sleep, you pay more attention to your food. You increase your hydration, you find a little bit of time for reflective meditation or journaling, and hopefully you can see a bigger picture beginning to emerge here. Because in three months time, you realize that those foundations that escaped you are finally in place. Hydration. <clears throat> I can't remember who it was, but I'm not lying. 84 to 86% of people in this country are dehydrated. In America, the thirst mechanism is so weak when they are thirsty, they mistake it for a food signal and eat. Yeah, think about that. Hydration. I can't emphasize enough how important this is, how easy it is to neglect. But the good news, how easy it is to reinstate as an active component of health. If you were to turn up at the doctor with low level random stuff, two things that they recommend or three, let, let's, let's forget exercise. Let's go with two. Two things that they usually recommend is sleep more and drink more water. You probably heard that many, many times. There's a reason for that. When you take your car into the car wash where the big brushes spin and you've got the super hairdryer at the end, that is doing to the outside of your car what the water is doing to the inside of your body. It flushes toxins and all of the nasty bits and pieces out of your system. But more importantly, it, it helps repair, it prevents cramps. A, a slight drop in hydration can impact mental clarity, focus and attention by you know, several percent. My recommendations here, a ballpark is aim for two liters a day. So score yourself, honestly score yourself. If you're three, you're a three. There's no shame in admitting that. You are where you are. It's no no longer time to hide it's time to be honest and show up if you're a three you're a three what does four look like let me tell you what four looks like you cannot progress what you do not know in terms of measurement spend one week either using an app and you can get the fitbit app even if you don't have a fitbit and simply use the hydration part where you'll put in when you drink you could have a spreadsheet you could write it on the fridge doesn't matter Spend one week getting an eyeball of how much you drink. And then you can see where to make progress. And my recommendations here are to increase it by 250 milliliters a week. The last thing you want to do is let's say you're, you know, very low, 750. 
and you literally go up to two to three liters, you'll start to flush a lot of good stuff out your system. You'll be in the toilet 70 times a day and you'll hate life. Build up slowly and in a manageable way to get to that sweet spot of entry level two liters of water a day. Now, obviously, factors could dictate that for some people that's three to four if you work outside if you're a large friend if you've got a very physical job if you also go to the gym on a regular basis look at it in terms of calories also look at it in terms of perspiration possibly if you do sweat quite a lot add some salt or electrolytes into that water will make it more beneficial so get yourself on the map by establishing your baseline for one week and then look to aim for that golden two litres by increasing 250 millilitres a week. Sleep. There's a lot of people struggle with sleep. I had several on a course that I ran. And you've got people out there getting three to four hours a night. And they literally become the walking dead. I cannot emphasise I would actually put sleep above everything else. If your sleep is bad, <clears throat> everything else gets hit. And let me just let me just refer to a brief triangle here with sleep, exercise, and food. When sleep's bad, you feel like you've got no energy. The last thing you want to do is work out, and you end up binging and snacking to kind of basically chuck coal in this this fire that's desperately trying to go out. When you're not exercising, <clears throat> you tend to feel a bit more sleepy and that can impact your food choices. Now, when your food choices are bad, you can feel tired and therefore not have the energy to exercise. So can you see how that triangle kind of impacts everything? And I would say a level below that, sleep hits the lot. Hydration is so important, but nowhere near as important as sleep. If you turned up in my world and said, Steve, my hydration is terrible and I sleep four hours a night, trust me the fact that you've had bad hydration for that long and are still alive tells me something <laughs> it's not that bad but four hours of sleep is taking years off of your life literally i'm, I'm not here to shock anyone i'm here to be honest four hours of sleep and let's look at sleep briefly so we're about halfway through the bits and pieces now the first aspect of sleep <clears throat> let's say three hours your brain enters deep sleep. That is, it, it's not black and white. It's not deep sleep is body and REM sleep is mind. There's a little bit of overlap. If we were to say that we can actually section these two areas, the first three hours of sleep, you will enter about two phases of deep sleep. And that is where your body repairs itself. We were talking everything, tissue, bone, muscle the whole lot but you don't get much REM sleep after about three hours REM sleep starts to appear and the cycles of REM sleep get longer the longer you sleep so if you've had five hours of sleep you might feel physically recovered but you've had a fraction of the REM sleep you could have got which is why I mentioned the walking dead we're not tired, we're able-bodied, but we literally have brain fog. We probably couldn't remember our name. We make silly mistakes, knock stuff over, wander into the kitchen four times, not knowing what the hell we came in there for in the first place. My recommendation here is aim for that seven hours. Six is doable. Any less than six and you will not process yesterday's mental activity in terms of archive storage and memories. Hence the brain fog, the mistakes and the dizziness and the drowsiness. So four hours <clears throat> will give you physical recovery, but also really ruin your alertness, your attention, probably even your ability to communicate effectively. Your, your brain will be wandering along like a car with two wheels missing. It will be struggling. So here's the thing, as I mentioned earlier, if you know and can be honest, you know, health needs work. My sleep is a mess. Ask yourself, and I mean this in the nicest way, but I'm not hiding it. I'm just literally calling you out. If you're catching up on three hours of soap an evening and your sleep is a mess, your sleep is your priority, particularly when 
you might be chopping years off of your existence. Now, I'm sure we'd all want as many years as we can get with the grandchildren. Yeah, no one's going to argue that. But imagine being on your deathbed, realizing you could have switched this around from today. Soaps aren't important. You are. Remember that. And if you need me to tell you that, take it on board until you believe it as well. You are valuable. And the bigger picture here is who is watching you and learning how to treat themselves by your actions. That's the big one. There's little eyes watching this, other people watching this, people that we work with that see how we carry ourselves. Show up for you. Be good for you. Treat yourself with respect and kindness. Sleep. It takes time to adjust it a couple of weeks. Circadian rhythms are your best friend. Go to bed and wake up at a similar time, even at weekends. It's the day-night cycle. It's why we slept in caves. It's why experiments underground in chambers show routine, because we still function on that rhythm. Aim for seven hours. Any less you are doing yourself serious damage. Understand that relationships now obviously lockdown had a bit of a wallop for a lot of us in terms of not going out and living online and not seeing people and i don't think many of us have really considered the emotional and mental and relationship consequences of that there will be people near and dear to you in your world be the person that calls them up or messages them i know relationships are a two-way street if you feel that it's too much, that maybe you've drifted far apart, then then be OK to let people go. You know, no one says that everyone in your world has to still be there at the end of the chapter or the book. People come and go. I've lost friends. I've gained new ones. <clears throat> you know, family, that's the difficult one. <laughs> We're not going to go there for obvious reasons. That could probably be a webinar in and of itself. And even then, you've got a choice how much time you give to people. And I would say boundaries are so important here. If you know that you've been the doormat and the yes person for a very, very long time, you can change that. It will shock a few people because your track record says the complete opposite. But it is doable. It's possible. You'd be surprised what's possible when you stop telling yourself, I can't. Trust me. You will be surprised what's possible when instead of writing stuff off and throwing it in the bin, you say, well, well hold up, hold up. Why do I keep stopping myself from starting? So with relationships, now I know hundreds, thousands of people that I've met and coached over my lifetime. There's about seven that I'd leave my kids with. That's the difference. There's a handful of people in my inner world that I would trust with my kids. There's a lot of acquaintances, <clears throat> coaches. There's wonderful people I know. Make the effort. But also understand that the most important relationship you have is with yourself. And that's where some of the others come into play. So score yourself honestly on relationships. And if it is a three, it's a three. What does four look like? A couple of phone calls, you know, talking to the people a bit more in depth than, you know, hi, Joel, how are you? And disappearing and that's it. Genuinely showing interest. Because here's the thing. Communication is one of the most important parts of living a meaningful, confident and fulfilling life. You get to practice that. You get to practice that in conversation with people. Yeah. Think about that. Put it put it into action. So career, as I mentioned earlier, I'm sorry if it kind of knocked you for six, but I'm just being honest. I've met a lot of people that are in a job they hate. Their words, not mine that they hate and they've been there for absolutely years so score yourself i mean i, I what i do i absolutely love it and i, and I hope it comes through I, I do this because i genuinely enjoy speaking about physical fitness and mental well-being but more importantly i understand the impact <clears throat> and i don't do this for guilt that's an important one to understand I'm not giving back because I was a bad person and need to right my wrongs. I genuinely give because I know that people take this into their world and it impacts them and their partner and their kids and their friends. And, and they show up more confident. They show up more fulfilled. They show up in a better place than they were 
And that's the tide that raises all boats for me. I know that doing this has an impact and adds value to people that are in a pretty bad place by giving them stepping stones to take action. And again, I said, it's the small wins. It's the small wins. We're not here to 10x your life or change everything in five minutes. We're here to take the small steps that lead to progress. So with your career, if now is the moment that you realize you simply have to change what you do, do it. Make it a priority because if your career is this black hole that sucks the life and joy out of so many other areas, do what you can do to change it and move across. And you'll know what that looks like. I, I can't give you any insights in there. It's a personal thing. You will know exactly what that looks like. When you can get up to the seven area, then you're in a good place. You know, if you literally hate your job and would rather not go there, find a way to leave it and change it because there's a there's a there's a deep fire inside us, this kind of blast furnace, this passion, this purpose. And for a lot of people, that becomes a flicker and eventually goes out. And uh, Les Brown said, many of us die at 25 and get buried at 75. So yeah, very powerful. Pay attention to that. And if you are living that, understand that you can change it. Hobbies. I've been guilty of this. Um, I love taking my mountain bike to the forest and carving it up as fast as possible without breaking any bones. It's an absolute thrill. You are extremely mindful. It's very difficult to let your mind wander off when it's required to save your life. It's, it's pretty good at that. It likes that job. <laughs> So be honest, hobbies, what have, I think there's there's two things here. What have you always wanted to do, but you've never done it? Or what did you really enjoy doing that you no longer do? What have, what have you kind of shelved? It could be archery, hence the bow on the screen. It, it may be forest walks. It, may, it might be painting. It may be music. Hobbies are important because that's time with you. That's developing and deepening that relationship. And as I mentioned, a huge part of what I do is mindfulness. When you're actively engaged in something that you enjoy, I guarantee you, your mind's not running off to look at stuff that you need to fix or problems. It's probably at peace or helping you with the task. And if you're very good at that task, it's probably just there observing one of the few times that we're truly present and at peace because we're not angry at yesterday or worried about tomorrow so score where you are on the hobbies let me give an example of hobbies i had someone come to see me for a one-to-one a -one and he said i've always wanted to learn the guitar and my reply it's very difficult to play the guitar you don't have <laughs> he purchased one on the lunch break so this is an action taker this is someone that realized I am standing in my way and I can also get out of my way. I'm, I'm the gate, but I'm also the gatekeeper. <clears throat> he changed that situation completely in two minutes. Guitar ordered, job done. It can be as simple as that. An expression of creativity. I've put this one near the end because for many of us, obviously with the virus and lockdown and cost of living crisis and um, you know, we're, we're not in a, we're not doing too well right now I get that there's a hell of a lot going on but it's so important to still express this creativity of ours and this does tie in with the previous one with hobbies if there are things if there are talents and I, th I think the differentiator here is stuff that's not your job let's say you're a music teacher Think of something else. Let's say you're an artist, you're a painter. Think of something else because it's, it's your job. Yes, it's creative, it's your passion and you enjoy it. But think of different, different outlets for talents, different ways of developing neural networks in your brain. And here's the thing. If you don't do anything new, that brain doesn't really develop strength and fire any new networks. And this is a wonderful thing. Think of the body. Imagine a body that sat on a sofa for 20 years. Or well, let me use another analogy. You, you're going on a family road trip and you've got the car on the drive under the tarpaulin. It hasn't been seen or moved for 15 years. Do you trust it? Of course you don't. 
Now, here's the thing with the brain. <clears throat> the brain works because we think and do stuff, but it potentially stops growing and evolving based on the degree to which it isn't challenged. Now, if you realize that most of the things you do on a daily basis, you are very good at, you don't need to think of tying your laces. You don't need to think, can I still brush my teeth? Can I drive my car? Do I know how to walk? Can I prepare a meal? Can I make tea? Can I push the hoover? You've done them hundreds, if not thousands of times. So your brain doesn't need to be there. And this is often why we have accidents because we are not with what we're doing. We're elsewhere. The monkey minds ran off. An expression of creativity tied in with hobbies is how you can fire new networks based on novel stimulus for things you're not good at that then wire in order to improve your competency, learning and skill acquisition. What can you take on board that would be enjoyable brain training? And I can't emphasize this enough. It is a game changer. The big one, who you are and who you know you can be. A big part of this will stem from your career. And as I said, I'm being brutally honest here. Many people have chosen safety over passion. You know you're good at what you do. There's, <clears throat> there's a literary masterpiece in you. There's an album of songs. There's a book of poetry. And yet you are in a job you don't like. That's a real dangerous place to find yourself. Now you've got time. If it takes months to move across, do it. Because so many people have sold themselves short. They've got a job, pays the bills, feeds the mouths. But they're, part of them's dead inside. And that's no way to spend your time here. Because if you think about it, you're not here ever again in this form. You know, who, who knows what's next and who knows what's before? But you are literally the universe having a brief human experience for no other purpose than the purpose you give it by the meaning that you give to your existence. Now, I would urge you as a matter of caution, if you are doing something career-wise that you despise, make it an absolute, think of it as the house is on fire and you've got to get out there as quick as possible. Hopefully that hits home. So score yourself on where you know you, I did this recently. I knew that I was not serving at the level I could. Um, I won't take too long on it, but for those of you that know my journey, I got smack sideways with long covid multiple health issues eye surgery my confidence got knocked to six i couldn't even coach because i was lifeless and then i realized i just things started to get better and i realized that there was a much much bigger game for me to play that i could reach millions of lives that i did deserve it that it was possible that i was a confident coach that, that was my purpose. And I, I had to have a long talk with myself because of how easy the brain can run off and dismiss stuff and keep you small and safe. And I realized I'm, he I'm here to impact millions, not thousands. I'm here to do my thing my way. And it's a privilege to be able to do that. So ask yourself the same question. Beyond what you are currently doing, open those curtains and see that bigger stage that you're potentially scared to walk on. Because I guarantee you that that's your thing and that will give you a much more fulfilling existence. And that will then ripple into the other areas of your life. And it's, it's almost this wave that fixes everything else. When you are in a great place, you don't need me to tell you to exercise buy better food and go to bed at 11 o'clock instead of three in the morning. When you trust yourself, when you can treat yourself with kindness and compassion, you show up for you realizing that it's your job. No one's going to do it for you. It's your job to look after you. So from the 10 areas, Choose no more than three that will have a big impact on your life once improved. Now, if your career is the big one, then obviously that's the thing to work on. In terms of health, I would look at sleep, 
exercise and either hydration or food. I wouldn't say any one's more important than the other unless one of them is really bad. And as I said, the numbers, you know, if you've got a few fives, look at the two and three. But then realistically look at what will the two and the three become in a four and a five <clears throat> bring into my life? Because fixing your sleep and hydration is probably a lot more important than taking up archery or learning a piano. <laughs> just, just being honest, fixing the stuff that will have the biggest impact is where I would spend my time. So use that blueprint to create a plan and action steps on what one number of progress looks like for you. Put it into action for two to three weeks to see any change. And here's the thing. It's like having a workout and checking the mirror and not seeing any difference. Or, you know, you've, you've done your diet for one day and you haven't lost a stone or you, you meditated, but enlightenment has escaped you. Give yourself a fighting chance. Anything takes weeks, if not months. Stick with it and understand that even if you don't see anything on the surface, the foundations are being built. Where are the foundations? Underground. What is the basis of the integrity of the structure? The foundations. What can't you see? The foundations. Hopefully you get the picture. Your work is building the stuff that supports everything you will see once you can let go of the fact that it's currently building what you can't see. Understand that. Follow the guide, take two to three areas, put them into practice with a 70 to 80% realistic effort because we're not robots. And I guarantee you that will have an incredible impact on your health, on your mental well-being, and your life in general. Thank you very much for your time. I love you.